Yo, what's up, it's the boy Lucas Faraji here to review Hell's Paradise episode 8. And yes, I know there is a delay with this episode, I must apologize. And uh, there is also a delay, so episode 9 is not out, thankfully. But uh, we're gonna hop into this review today, and uh, we're gonna try and decipher what exactly would have taken place in this episode. Just as always, before we jump into the video, make sure to like and subscribe, comment down below which other videos you perhaps would like to see us review. We did a character breakdown on a blue character so if you guys like to see that video make sure to click the link down below and proceed in doing so uh, we're gonna hop right into this one as well see you in a bit are usually very hard to gauge or even criticize because even when the execution is done incredibly well the strength portraying the intended outcome can sometimes impact overall enjoyment no there was no Gabimaru and Sekiri in this episode, which is fine because I stated previously in episode 5 that I believe Tenza and Nergai offer us an unusual dynamic which I quite enjoy. In this episode, however, it feels like I'm simply waiting for that character to inevitably die, which is annoying when that does come into fruition. It's why I'm usually against episode that resolves completely around one character with build up and backstory only for the episode's climax to be just said character's death. It can sometimes feel manipulative in a sense that we're being forced to care about this person that ultimately isn't going to matter in the grand scheme of things. This isn't to say that I didn't care about Tenza as a character, I just think that his death would have mattered more or it would have had more weight if I had a bit more time for him to interact with people in the present alongside finding out about his past. For example, I did like the fact that Tenza and the other guys seemed to develop a relationship with each other in the last episode which they were introduced. Noriga even went so far as to say that she could see herself getting married to him when all of this stuff is over. However, the potential for that tragic romance is kind of lost because it never had the chance to fully blossom into something more before getting snipped off, but maybe that's the point. Tenzo would have died in the slums never accomplishing anything if his master hadn't found, found him and seen the potential in him. Through Tenzo's death, Shion and Tenzo now have the potential to live on throughout the story as better characters. In the end, Tenzo had to sacrifice his potential as a character and his potential for a happy life to ensure the potential of everyone he cares about to survive. And I think I actually say the word potential like 10 times there, but we move. In a sense, maybe it's the idea of potentially never uh, never really getting the chance to thrive and that's the real what if factor of future things that ended up surviving maybe that was the plan all along either way this episode was a decent a decent episode I would say uh, not necessarily a banger but not necessarily trash as well it was just decent. With the last episode, we were provided with so many information. I thought we were going to proceed from that, but instead we offer somewhat of a filler episode, uh, which is fine in the grand scheme of things. And we were able to see the Tencent's power even more, that the more this story goes on, our prolonged I'm not sure how they will be able to defeat them. Perhaps it's a case that they would have to gain or take a sip of this, the elixir of life to even stand a chance. I did. There seemingly isn't no weakness uh, of stopping the Tencent at this point. I'm not even sure Gabumar would stand a chance because ultimately, even if you're essentially killing them over and over and over, that is going to drain your stamina, which they'll come out of in the long run. But in this episode, as mentioned, it's just a decent one going forward and we can't wait to see what the story is going to present to us. As mentioned, there is no episode 9 for this week, so this will be the only breakdown I was intending on recording two videos for this week. But And then I had the news break that 
episode 9 will not be released. So, going forward, we're going to see if we're going to happen into another character breakdown for Blue Lock. I'm not sure, but leave your comments down below in terms of which other series that you perhaps would like to see us review. As mentioned, we are considering reviewing Eminence of Shadow. If you guys do want to see that, make sure to like and subscribe. Comment down below if you guys are interested in that video. Stay tuned for more videos like this. Check out some of our other videos as well. So, check out some of our other members, a part of Infamous Personal Challenge as well. Check out my first no as well. This has been your boy, Luffy Spargy. Hopefully you guys enjoy and peace. Run that bit like a track me. Run that bit up like a track me. Yeah, 40 round drunk get on gone. Ayy, aim it off for nigga dawn. Ayy, run the witch prayer when there's nobody home and then take everything that he owns. Ayy, my niggas got all their pose. Yeah, dirty round drunk at your nose. Ayy, niggas they don't want no beef. Yeah, she wanna fuck me cause my teeth are golden. Talk all that shit we can meet, it's over. I cannot smoke regular weed, it's OG. I'm on that kill, she gon' know. Ayy, OG clip right at your nose. Ayy, ride with the chopper, I might blow. Ayy, free X, nigga, free bro. What?